Hi. Welcome back to another hsebox.com video. In this video, we will provide you with all information in order for you can effectively carry out inspections in your workplace. At the end of this video, we have an offer for you. So watch till the end and don't miss it. I can't believe you do not subscribe to your channel yet. Do you know that subscribe to our channel is free? And drop a like if it's free as well. Come on I hope you did it. That will encourage us to make more videos like this. Thank you very much we really appreciate it. Let's get started. Why are workplace inspections important? Workplace inspections help prevent incidents, injuries, and illnesses. Through a critical examination of the workplace, inspections help to identify and record hazards for corrective action. Health and safety committees can help plan, conduct, report, and monitor inspections. Regular workplace inspections are an important part of the overall occupational health and safety program and management system if present. What is the purpose of inspections? Inspections are important as they allow you to listen to the concerns of workers and supervisors, gain further understanding of jobs and tasks, identify existing and potential hazards, determine underlying causes of hazards, recommend corrective action, monitor steps taken to eliminate hazards or control the risk. For example, engineering controls, administrative controls, policies, procedures, personal protective equipment. How do you plan for inspections? Planning is essential for an effective inspection. What to examine? Every inspection must examine who, what, where, when, and how. Pay particular attention to items that are or are most likely to develop into unsafe or unhealthy conditions because of stress, wear, impact, vibration, heat, corrosion, chemical reaction, or misuse. Include areas where no work is done regularly, such as parking lots, rest areas, office storage areas, and locker rooms. Workplace elements. Look at all workplace elements, the people, the environment, the equipment, and the process. The environment includes such hazards as noise, vibration, lighting, temperature, and ventilation. Equipment includes materials, tools, and apparatus for producing a product or a service. The process involves how the worker interacts with the other elements in a series of tasks or operations. What types of hazards do we look for in a workplace? Types of workplace hazards include Safety hazards such as those caused by inadequate machine guards, unsafe workplace conditions, and unsafe work practices. Biological hazards caused by organisms such as viruses, bacteria, fungi, and parasites. Chemical hazards caused by a solid, liquid, vapor, gas, dust, fume, or mist. Ergonomic hazards caused by physiological and psychological demands on the worker, such as repetitive and forceful movements, awkward postures arising from improper work methods, and improperly designed workstations, tools, and equipment. Physical hazards caused by noise, vibration, energy, weather, heat, cold, electricity, radiation, and pressure. Psychosocial hazards that can affect mental health or well-being such as overwork, stress, bullying, or violence. What type of information do I need to complete an inspection report? Diagram of area. Use drawings of the plant layout or floor plans to help you draw a diagram. Divide the workplace into areas based on the process. Visualize the activities in the workplace and identify the location of machinery, equipment, and materials. Show the movement of material and workers, and the location of air ducts, aisles, stairways, alarms, and fire exits. Use several simple diagrams if the area is large. Ask workers and supervisors for their comments on the information. They know the area better than anyone else. Equipment Inventory Know what type of machinery or equipment is present. Review technical data sheets or manufacturer's safety manuals. 
read work area records to become familiar with the hazards of the equipment. Hazardous product or chemical inventory. Determine which products are used in the workplace and whether safety data sheets are available. Find out if all sources of exposure are properly controlled. Make sure that all workers have received education and training in how to safely use, handle and store the products they work with. Check that all hazardous products are labeled appropriately according to Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. Checklists. A checklist helps to clarify inspection responsibilities, controls inspection activities, and provides a report of inspection activities. Checklists help with the on-the-spot recording of findings and comments but are careful. Do not allow the inspection team to become so intent on noting the details listed in the checklist that it misses other hazardous conditions. Use checklists only as a basic tool. Some of the checklists you can use are General information Checklist for manufacturing facilities Checklist for offices Checklist for chemical or product inventory Checklist for outdoor areas You can find this and must more checklists on our website. Reports Keeping inspection records is important. Past inspection records show what has been previously identified. They also show what an earlier inspection team concentrated on and what areas it did not inspect. Do not simply repeat or copy previous inspection results. Use the older inspection reports to help look for issues, and then determine whether recommendations were implemented. Note if the changes have been effective. Are there other types of inspection reports that may be useful? The following describes three other types of inspection reports. Ongoing. Pre-operation. Periodic. Supervisors and workers continually conduct ongoing inspections as part of their job responsibilities. Such inspections identify hazardous conditions and either correct them immediately or report them for corrective action. The frequency of these inspections varies with the amount and conditions of the equipment used. Daily checks by users assure that the equipment meets minimum acceptable safety requirements. Pre-operation checks involve inspections of new or modified equipment or processes. Often these are done after workplace shutdowns. Periodic inspections are regular. Planned inspections of the critical components of equipment or systems that have a high potential for causing serious injury or illness. The inspections are often part of preventive maintenance procedures or hazard control programs. Laws and regulations may specify that qualified or competent persons must inspect certain types of equipment, such as elevators, boilers, pressure vessels, scaffolding, and fire extinguishers at determined points in the work process and at regular intervals. Who should be on the inspection team? Health and safety committee members are obvious choices of personnel to carry out formal inspections, especially if they have received training or certification. Other criteria for selecting the inspection team are Knowledge of regulations and procedures Knowledge of potential hazards Experience with work procedures involved Engineers Maintenance personnel Occupational hygienists Health and safety professionals Supervisors or managers may be a part of the inspection team, or they may be called upon to help with certain aspects of the inspection or to help explain equipment or processes. Large workplaces may have more than one inspection team. The various teams can have separate areas to inspect. Should supervisors be on the inspection team? It depends. Supervisors are responsible for taking action to prevent incidents, illness, and injury. Supervisors have an advantage in safety inspections because of familiarity with workers, equipment, and the environment. This familiarity is also a disadvantage because it can interfere with a supervisor's objectivity. If the supervisor is not on the inspection team, before inspecting a department or area, the team should contact the supervisor in charge, but the supervisor should not act as a tour guide. If the supervisor of the area does not accompany the inspection team, Consult the supervisor before leaving the area. Discuss each recommendation with the supervisor. Report items that the supervisor can immediately correct. Note these on the report as corrected. This documentation keeps the records clear and serves as a reminder to check the condition during the next inspection. Although a supervisor may interpret reporting as a criticism, 
the inspection team cannot fail to report hazards. Aim to be objective and maintain an attitude that is firm, friendly, and fair. How long should an inspection take to do? It is difficult to accurately estimate how long each inspection will take. The time required depends on what is found, how many questions are asked, and how large and complex the work area is. Inspections are ineffective when the given time allows for only a quick look. How frequently should inspections be done? The purpose is to keep the workplace free of hazards. The schedule should state when to inspect each area or item within the workplace, who carries out the inspection, what degree of detail to inspect each area or item, how often inspections are performed will depend on several factors. The frequency of planned formal inspections may be set in your legislation. Past incident records. Number and size of different work operations. Type of equipment and work processes, those that are hazardous or potentially. Number of shifts, the activity of every shift may vary. New processes or machinery. Legislative requirements for your jurisdiction. High hazard or high risk areas should receive extra attention. It is often recommended to conduct inspections as often as committee meetings. Do not conduct an inspection immediately before a committee meeting but try to separate inspections and meetings by at least one week. This time allows for small items to be fixed and gives the committee an opportunity to focus on issues requiring further action. How are inspections actually done? Discuss the planned inspection route before undertaking the inspection. Review where inspection team members are going and what they are looking for. For example, during the inspection, huddle before going into noisy areas. This discussion eliminates the need for arm waving, shouting, and other unsatisfactory methods of communication. For inspections, wear personal protective equipment, PPE, where required. If you do not have PPE and cannot get any, do not enter the area. List this as a deficiency during the inspection. Reinspect the area when PPE is provided. Observation. Look for deviations from accepted work practices. Use statements such as, a worker was observed operating a machine without a guard. Do not use information derived from inspections for disciplinary measures. Some common poor work practices include, using machinery or tools without authority, operating at unsafe speeds or another violation of safe work practice, removing guards or other safety devices, or making the devices ineffective. Using defective tools or equipment or using tools or equipment in unsafe ways. Using hands or body instead of tools or push sticks. Overloading, crowding or failing to balance materials or handling materials in unsafe ways, including improper lifting. Repairing or adjusting equipment that is in motion, under pressure, or electrically charged. Failing to use or maintain, or improperly using, personal protective equipment or safety devices. Creating unsafe, unsanitary, or unhealthy conditions by improper personal hygiene, using compressed air for cleaning clothes, poor housekeeping, or smoking in unauthorized areas. Standing or working under suspended loads, scaffolds, shafts, or open hatches. Discussion with or observation of workers who may be overloaded, fatigued, working in conflict with others or working in isolation, working alone. Inspection Principles When conducting inspections, follow these basic principles. Draw attention to the presence of any immediate danger, other items can await the final report. Shut down and lock out any hazardous items that cannot be brought to a safe operating standard until repaired. Do not operate the equipment. Ask the operator for a demonstration. If the operator of any piece of equipment does not know what dangers may be present, this is cause for concern. Never ignore any item because you do not have the knowledge to make an accurate judgment of safety. Look up, down, around, and inside. Be methodical and thorough. Do not spoil the inspection with a once-over lightly approach. Clearly describe each hazard and its exact location in your rough notes. Allow on-the-spot recording of all findings before they are forgotten. Record what you have or have not examined in case the inspection is interrupted. 
ask questions, but do not unnecessarily disrupt work activities. This interruption may interfere with the efficient assessment of the job function and may also create a potentially hazardous situation. Consider the static, stop position, and dynamic, in motion, conditions of the item you are inspecting. If a machine is shut down, consider postponing the inspection until it is functioning again. Consider factors such as how the work is organized or the pace of work and how these factors impact safety. Discuss as a group, can any problem, hazard or accident generate from this situation when looking at the equipment, the process, or the environment. Determine what corrections or controls are appropriate. Do not try to detect all hazards simply by relying on your senses or by looking at them during the inspection. You may have to monitor equipment to measure the levels of exposure to chemicals, noise, radiation, or biological agents. Take a photograph if you are unable to clearly describe or sketch a particular situation. What should the final report have in it? To make a report, first, copy all unfinished items from the previous report into the new report. Then write down the observed unsafe condition and recommended methods of control. Enter the department or area inspected, the date, and the inspection team's names and titles on top of the page. Number each item consecutively, followed by a hazard classification of items according to the chosen scheme. State exactly what has been detected and accurately identify its location. Instead of stating machine unguarded, state guard missing on upper pulley number 6 lathe in North Building. Assign a priority level to the hazards observed to indicate the urgency of the corrective action required. For example, A equals major, requires immediate action. B equals serious, requires short-term action. C equals minor, requires long-term action. Report issues in a concise, factual way. Management should be able to understand and evaluate the problems, assign priorities, and quickly reach decisions. After each listed hazard, specify the recommended corrective action and establish a definite correction date if possible and appropriate. Each inspection team member should review for accuracy, clarity, and thoroughness. What should I know about follow-up and monitoring? Review the information from regular inspections to identify where corrective action was needed. Determine if these actions have been taken. Use older reports to identify trends. Analysis of inspection reports may show the following. Priorities for other corrective action. Need for improving safe work practices. Insight into why incidents are occurring in particular areas. Need for education and training in certain areas. Areas and equipment that require more in-depth hazard analysis. The Health and Safety Committee can review inspections, identify trends, and monitor the progress of the recommendations. This analysis can be used as part of the continual improvement process for the Occupational Health and Safety Program or Management System. Summary of Inspection Information Requirements Basic layout plans showing equipment and materials used. Process flow. Information on chemicals. Storage areas. Workforce size, shifts, and supervision. Workplace rules and regulations. Job procedures and safe work practices. Manufacturer specifications. Personal protective equipment, PPE. Engineering controls. Emergency procedures, fire, first aid, and rescue. Incident and investigation report. Worker complaint reports regarding particular hazards in the workplace, including psychosocial hazards. Recommendations of the Health and Safety Committee. Previous inspections. Maintenance reports, procedures, and schedules. Regulator inspection reports or other external audits, insurance, corporate specialist. Monitoring reports, levels of chemicals, physical or biological hazards. Reports of unusual operating conditions. Names of inspection team members and any technical experts assisting. Thank you for still with us. As we promise you, we have a special offer. Find our link in the description login into your account or create a free account. And you can download two HSE documents for free every week. Don't miss this opportunity. We hope this video helps you to improve your knowledge of how to carry out an effective inspection of your workplace. If you have any questions let us know in the comments section below. And we are happy to help you.
Check our channel for more safety topics. The link is in the description. Never forget safety is your responsibility. Stay safe always. Bye bye. See you soon.